Okay, welcome back. So now what we're going to do is analyze some, do some Galois theory on, uh, on local fields. So uh, in general, let me remind you a little bit of, um, of Galois theory of number fields before I say something about the Galois theory of a local field. So over uh, in number fields, Uh, we have, so suppose if you have an, a Galois extension, of a uh, number of fields, uh, then uh, you have um, also an extension of the ring of integers, okay? And um, <clears throat> if you have a prime ideal, so you typically people write these um, diagrams that you have L over K, inside it you have the uh, ring of integers and you have the ring of integers of K, okay? And inside the ring of integers of K, you have a prime ideal, okay? So here, this is going to denote a prime ideal Um, and then uh, what you can do is see that prime ideal, now take the elements that generate that prime ideal and use those to generate an ideal of OL. That in general will not be a prime ideal of OL, but what, well, what one proved in a class in algebraic number theory is that it's a unique factorization into prime ideals of OL. So this is not in general a prime ideal, but it will factor, this is uh, some other type of uh, primes um, or some fancy letters for primes. And uh, so it will factor as a product of primes to powers in general, um, beta one will be to uh, pr a power E1 and so on. But because we are working over like a Galois extension, those are all to the same power, okay? Uh, so each one of these are prime ideals above the prime P, okay? <clears throat> so what happens then is that now I can also do um, a quotient of OL modulo one of these, say beta one, and uh, that will be, that is a maximal ideal, so that is a field. So it gives me an extension over this one that is also a, uh, a field. And now this is an extension of residue fields and it's like an extension of finite fields. Okay. <clears throat> And then there are uh, groups, uh, Galois groups that we're interested in. There is a group that is called the decomposition group. I've picked here a prime, one of the primes, it doesn't matter which one you pick in this, in this setting. Uh, so there is uh, those elements of the Galois group, the decomposition group is uh, those elements of the Galois group of L over K, that fix uh, beta one, okay? And uh, the inertia, so this is called the decomposition group. And the inertia subgroup <clears throat> are those elements of the decomposition group such that um, sigma of alpha is congruent to alpha modulo uh, beta one for all alpha in OL. So um, what happens is that actually there is a map 
Um, so these are actually, so if you want to know what elements of the Galois group will actually um, induce automorphisms of this other extension of residue fields, you want, first of all, uh, you want uh, in you want Galois elements that will fix beta one, so it fixes this extension. So this extension still makes sense. And uh, once you have those, then this is the um, the kernel of that map. Okay, so you have a map from decomposition to uh, the Galois group of that extension of residue fields. Uh, which I'm going to call L over K. So if this is uh, L, this is little k. And uh, then I have a map from sigma to uh, sigma twiddle. And it makes sense. That map makes sense because the decomposition elements fix beta 1. And then uh, the kernel of this map I don't know how to call this one the kernel. So this is uh, the kernel of this map over here. Okay. So that is what inertia is. Now uh, let's talk about what happens in the local field case. So over local fields, so if now if L over K is a, an extension of local fields, It's the same picture, except that over K, there's only one prime ideal. Okay? And in OK, there's only one prime ideal, which is the maximal ideal M. So it's much easier because there's only one prime uh, to worry about. Um, so there is a unique prime. A unique prime ideal uh, of L above M which is the one in OK. Uh, so in particular, the decomposition group, which the definition was like, OK, is the uh, elements of the Galois group that fix that ideal. There is only one ideal. It has to be sent to another ideal that is a maximal ideal. So it has to uh, send it to itself. So the decomposition group in that case is all of the Galois group. Which is not the case in the in the uh, case of number fields. Not always the case. And then we can uh, talk about some other extensions. So we're going to have. Um, we're also going to talk about K and R, which is the maximal unramified extension of K. We say in the previous slide, we say that if E is one, when you factor a prime like this, if E is one, then we say that the extension is unramified. Okay, so whenever you just um, decompose and there is no powers of primes in the decomposition of your prime ideal of upstairs, we say that that extension is unramified. So K and R is the compositum of all unramified extensions of K. And um, so we are going to have a tower now. I'm going to have an algebraic closure of K, I have K and R, and I have K. And it turns out that, um, well, I knew is precisely inertia is going to be uh, the group the Galois group that, or the subgroup of the Galois group that fixes the maximum and ramified extension. So uh, I'm going to define I nu to be the inertia subgroup of uh, Galois k bar over k. Since there is only one prime ideal, um, it's the inertia subgroup for that prime ideal for that extension. Um, from K bar down to K. And uh, this fits in the following exact sequence. So I can, the decomposition group, uh, there's always a map 
from the decomposition group to the Galois group of the um, of the um, of the residue field, uh, which in this particular case, so you can also think about it in terms of um, you can restrict to a uh, can ramified, and this is actually uh, the Galois group or isomorphic to the Galois group of the residue field. And on the other hand, you have the, uh, the kernel of that map. That kernel is um, precisely inertia. I, I hear like a little sound like, do you hear that also? Uh, yes, I do. Is it bothering anyone? I'm okay with it. It's it's sort of usually there. I oh, think. okay. Okay, I, I, this is the first time I noticed. Anyway, uh, so there is this exact sequence. Okay, so where the, uh, the fixed field, um, so this is the entire Galois group here. This would be uh, the entire decomposition group, okay, at nu, um, and then the fixed field by inertia is the maximal and ramified extension. Okay, so that's what inertia does. Inertia um, fixes uh, a field that is unramified over k. The same thing happens in the number of field k's. If you look at what is the fixed field of inertia, is the largest extension of uh, of k inside L. Uh, that is unramified above P. Okay, so uh, now we define, we're going to define um, what does it mean to be uh, something to be unramified or something where inertia acts. So let Sorry, can sigma... I ask a, a quick clarifying question? Yeah. So it, it, just to make sure I'm understanding the sort of extension of definitions, do we define the inertial subgroup like I sub the valuation as all elements of the Galois group uh, K bar of K bar over K maximal and random and ramified, where the elements of the valuation ring of K bar are fixed for that Galois element modulo the maximal ideal of k-bar? Uh, uh, sorry, yes, if, if, I, a if I follow of... what, you, what you said, yeah. So what, what happens is, mm -hmm. um, again, so if you look at the previous picture, um, we had to pick, uh, there was a prime here, and then for the inertia, we actually picked one of the primes above p, right? And then we build a decomposition group, uh, a Galois element that fix that prime, and then inertia would be uh, elements such that when you act on uh, on elements, they are its the identity modulo that prime. Mm -hmm. In the uh, in the local field case, there is only one prime, so there is a prime ideal uh, here, M, and then as you go up the tower. There's always just one prime ideal in the ring of integers. Okay. Yeah. So um, when you factor that prime, it might appear to a power, right? So in here, there's going to be another prime ideal there. But when you factor that one in that mm -hmm. ring of integers, when you factor M, it doesn't appear to any power. Um, there is no, so in here, um, the, the prime above it is not to uh, any power to get that identity because it's unramified. And then you go all the time, all the way here to some maximal ideal here, and there is where ramification happens. So here the, the prime, when you factor it a bit above, it starts to appear to powers and powers and powers. Mm -hmm. Okay. But then if you look at like what inertia does, then it will be like what you said. So it will be, um, um, uh, Galois elements such that when you act um, modulo the prime ideal, it's the identity. 
Okay, so, that so makes sense. If you look, it's it's this is it's in fact defined as an inverse limit. So it's mm -hmm. better to define it just like think again at a local extension of local fields, right? So this is going to be some inverse limit of uh, inertia groups for extensions, for intermediary extensions. And then the definition is the same, except that there's only one prime ideal to worry about. So it's exactly the same definition at every level that the, the action modulo the maximal ideal above has to be the identity at every level. Which is going to cause that then the action is trivial on the residue field. Okay, so it, they induce. That's why they are in the in the kernel. Here, that when I take out an element that is in inertia and map it here, so map it, and see what's happening in, at the level of the residue field is not doing anything because it's identity modulo the maximal ideal. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, if um, um, so this. Sigma, let Sigma be a set uh, on which the Galois group acts. Okay. Uh, so for example, the M torsion is one such thing. Uh, we say that um, Sigma is unramified At new, if the action of the subgroup inertia on sigma is trivial. Okay. So as long as the action, if you take an element that is in inertia, doesn't do anything to that set, then we say that that set is unramified. Okay, by extending what happens to um, um, to elements of the max of the of the ring of integers, essentially. Okay, so for example, um, if you have an elliptical over k, then we know that the Galois group acts on the m torsion, and it acts on uh, the p torsion or the well the p torsion and therefore on the Tate module also, and we want to know whether the action is ramified or unramified in there. This part is a bit technical, but it's uh, it's very useful when to start talking about uh, division field and so on. So I, I like to um, to address it. But in any case, uh, here is what we uh, what we can say about whether the um, what what's unramified about the M torsion and the Tate module. So if you have an elliptic curve over a local field K and um, assume that the reduction is non-singular, so it's also an elliptic curve, then first uh, let M be uh, relatively prime to the characteristic uh, then the m torsion is unramified new and uh, b uh, let uh, l be different from the characteristic of k, then uh, the elatic Tate module is unramified at new. We are in fact going to need this to prove the model of a theorem. We're going to need to show um, that the field of definition of the m torsion is in some um, extension of a number field that is unramified at most primes. Um, for to use some other theorems some, for some finiteness. Uh, so this is actually going to come back um, in the in the model of a theorem, the proof of the model of a theorem. So um, let's prove this. 
it's a good example also of how sort of like deal with uh, action of Galois. Okay, so first, um, we might as well just go up by uh, a finite extension. So let k prime over k be a finite extension uh, such that the m torsion is completely defined over uh, k prime. The field of definition of the m torsion, the m torsion is a uh, of degree m squared. So it's given by polynomials of degree m squared. So you can actually define all the um, all the m torsion in a finite extension. Okay. So now let um, r prime, m prime, k prime, nu prime uh, be the elements of uh, of k prime elements as a local field. All the possible, all the uh, little parts and pieces of a local field, but for k prime, and uh, let E uh, be given by a minimal uh, model at new, so that uh, then the evaluation of delta is zero because there is um, there is good reduction. The 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 reduction of E is assumed to be uh, non-singular, so the evaluation of delta must be zero. Okay, and um, it turns out that when you extend uh, uh, when you extend the local field, the valuation that you get above uh, it is just a multiple of the valuation below. So um, so new prime uh, restricted to k is just a multiple. Of new. So uh, also, we do have that the evaluation of the uh, of the discriminant for new prime that is a multiple of zero, so also zero. So uh, the equation will also be minimal. If the evaluation is zero, then it is a uh, it is already minimal. You don't have to work hard at it because that's the least evaluation can be. Uh, so equation is also minimal. Uh, over k prime, or so at new prime. Uh, so um, the reduction over k prime is also non-singular. Okay. Um, and um, now uh, by um, our result before the m torsion of m will therefore, when you reduce to the residue field here, will be injective. Okay, because m was uh, prime to the characteristic and the reduction is good. So this will inject in there. All right, good. So now, um, great. So now, finally, uh, now let sigma be an inertia element. Okay. And take a point of m torsion. And we want to see that sigma acts trivially on the m torsion. So what we need is that um, that sigma acting on p is the action is trivial. Okay. Um, now, so I, I want to prove that. So we want that the action on P is trivial. 
Um, now, from the definition of inertia, um, sigma acts on um, on the points over the residue field uh, via the uh, reduction of sigma, which is the identity on uh, on k bar prime, because that is um, that is the definition of inertia that it will actually reduce to the identity on the residue field. Uh, so sigma acts trivially on the reduction, and so uh, how much is p sigma? Uh, let me extend that bar. So, what is the reduction of p sigma minus p? The reduction commutes with addition on the elliptic curve. Okay, so this is just reduction minus uh, reduction, and sigma acts with reduction as well. Okay. Um, So this is reduction and act on sigma, uh, but now acting with sigma twiddle, okay, minus the reduction on P. Sigma twiddle acts trivially on P twiddle because sigma twiddle is just the identity. So this is just P twiddle minus P twiddle, and that will be uh, just O twiddle, okay? But, uh, uh, reduction was injective on this uh, on these points on the m torsion. So if this goes to O, then p sigma minus p must be O, uh, which implies that p sigma is p. So uh, so inertia is actually acting trivially on m torsion. On the M torsion. Okay. All right. So um, now, uh, just for for part B, the part B was just on the Tate module. So the Tate module for a prime L is the inverse limit on L to the N torsion, and sigma acts trivially on each element there uh, on each piece of the uh, of the Tate module and then the action it just extends to the entire Tate module um, so sigma uh, sigma in the inertia group uh, then it's going to be acting uh, it, the action is induced by what happens at every uh, finite level so it has to also act trivially on the entire Tate module. And that proves uh, that theorem about the action. Okay, so this is um, the result we just proved is that the M torsion for M prime to P is um, uh, unramified and that the Tate module for an L prime to P that is also unramified. Okay, so next time we'll talk about um, uh, I'll, I'm out of time now, so I'll, I'll state actually the, the criterion, uh, sort of a, a converse to this, if we have um, a converse to this, which is the criterion of Nevernox Shevorevich, and then uh, we'll move on and talk about uh, good and bad reduction of elliptic curves. So I'll stop here.